we thank God like the prayer today. Praise God, being knit together in love. And I'm just beginning to learn. I'm learning. I'm just learning. But I just, I thank God that I'm learning. It's not too late. It's not too late. We're in the dispensation of grace. But what I mainly <laughs> praise God so grateful was that our car was stolen yesterday. It was parked right on the block. And Brother Paul had just gotten out of the car, so thank God he was okay. And 20 minutes within a half hour to run errands, came out, and the car was gone. So you got to do what you got to do, call the police to put in a report, insurance company, the whole nine yards. But just to be grateful and thankful that he was okay. And the car, we got a call from the police station this morning that the car was found. And that's a blessing. The car was found. And uh, there was some minor, I believe, we didn't get all the detail there was some damage because they messed with the ignition or something like that. But still, the car was found. Oh boy, the Lord doesn't put on you no more than you can bear. Because it's, I heard Friday night online that quite a few said it's been a hard week. It was quite a week. And then when you know this comes about, that just adds to even, uh, yes, it's a natural thing, but it's a power still that's behind it. And it's an evil spirit. And on top of what you're already going through. And but God is so merciful, the scripture says he will not put on you no more than you can be. And he comes in and comforts your spirit and delivers you. And praise God, he prepares you for the next go around. <laughs> but thank God you relish and bask in the deliverance. And praise God, you know, not that you're going to lay back and say, okay, when's the next one coming? No, thank God. No, because you'd be so joyful and so happy, you know, in your spirit and in your mind and heart. Because, boy, oh, boy, I'm not going to tell any of you guys, you know what it feels like when the Lord comes through and, 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 and lifts them powers off of your head so you can think. Praise God and lift them powers off of your body. Praise God so you can move around because you have things to do. You know, we still have things that, you know, must be done. So I thank God. We're continuing to pray one for another. That, praise God, it never, he says, pray without ceasing. And we will we'll continue with, that's never going to stop, I believe, until we are resurrected out of here. And only God knows when that may be. I says, Lord, you may decide to take me before the actual catching away takes place. And I might still be here to be a participant of that. A wonderful, wonderful event, but I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. There's some days where you feel so bad in your body, in your mind. You say, God, I don't know. Lord, for sometimes you say, Lord, I feel like I'm going to leave here. But he always comes through. But it's not your time. But you don't know. And that's what I'm starting to think about in my spirit. God, Professor Paul said, I live unto the Lord. I die unto the Lord. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he sent a Savior and someone into our lives that can help us through whatever fire, whatever problems, whatever sorrows, whatever sadness, whatever situation we might be in. Because in us trying to bear our burdens with us, he's there with us bear them forth. Amen? Amen? Let's just have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for the powerful and anointed testimonies and songs and praises and prophecies that you brought forth to remind us and show us and tell us, Lord, that you're with us and you're able to bring us through no matter what situation we might be in. Father God, we ask you might bind up all the powers that might war against your word and your power, Lord, and your anointing, Lord. And even in, in us, Lord, that might tear down the doubts and the fears and the frustration that's, that's in our flesh, Lord, and bring us into your spirit, Lord, where we can rejoice and praise you and thank you for all that you've done. Father God, we're so grateful that you decided to choose us, Lord, and to come into our lives, Lord, and to grow in us, Lord, and strengthen us so that we might have a praise and thanksgiving for you, Lord. Lord, we ask you might bind up everything that might come against you, everything that's not like you, Lord that you might put down anything in me that's not bringing forth the truth about you, Lord, and that your spirit might have reign over this, everyone in this church, everyone on this line, our families, and everything around us. And we ask these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. 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 Just want to ask God to touch all the people, Lord, that might be having physical problems, mental problems, spiritual problems. You know, no matter what our problem is, we, we serve a God that can heal us and help us. I was, I was thanking God just this week. I was in the gym, and it's a guy that he, he's blessed this church in a couple of different, you know, a couple of different ways. And uh, you know, he went to the doctor. He found out he had fluid on the brain, and he asked asked me to ask the church, which I did, and ask and to pray for him, Brother Marshall. Last week, he gave me the report that fluid's gone. He's feeling much better. He don't, he, he don't even think that they said that he was going to have an oper he was gonna have to have an operation. He don't believe he need to have an operation. He was stumbling around saying, you know, he didn't know. He's in his 80s, and he didn't understand why all of a sudden he's, he's feeling, you know, he's losing his balance and things like that. But they told him that was the situation. But now he said he's not losing it. You know, and I, and I was just thanking God that, that he, he, he's shown us that we have a connection with God through Jesus Christ, that we can be healed, we can be delivered, we can, we can be blessed in our lives, that he will come in and help us through the different situations that we're in. You know, we love our children. We love the people around us. We love those that don't know him in the power of his might. And we just pray that God would touch them and help them realize it's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. He's talking to, you know, uh, the girl that, that we, uh, Selena, who always is asking for prayer for this church, from, from us, from this body of Christ. 
And as we pray, she was telling you know, she was telling me how Sean, I was telling you the guy that that has had the hole has a hole in his stomach. Yeah, looked like to me toilet paper stuck in his in his stomach. And he was going around and everything, and, and you know we tried, you know, did whatever we could, a couple dollars, you know, sandwiches, stuff like that. Gordon brought some stuff in, gave him some pants and things like that. Last week, week before last round now, he lost both his legs. You know, out there in the cold. Just a couple of weeks before that, another person passed. Just pray that they called out for Jesus before they left this world. And you see all these things going on around us. All the danger, all the sorrow. Just, just listening in, in New Jersey. Girl that evidently was trying to do the best she could said that I heard she was a pastor. I heard she was uh, someone trying to serve the Lord. She was also uh, uh, on in Congress or either a councilman. She was trying to do what she could. Somebody came up to her while she's sitting in her car and unloaded their gun in her. You know, and, and you got all this, and then you got the Chinese sending balloons over, starting a little situation with America. And, you know, you got all these different things going on. That you got Ukraine, where you got Putin. You know, Hitler might be dead, but his spirit, the spirit that made him the way he was, is very much alive. Those principalities and those powers and those spiritual wickedness in high places are very real. Those demons and devils are real. They are real. Jesus told us what the problem was. Ain't no aliens from billions and trillions of miles away come here to mess with, America, mess with anybody. It's demons and devils that have been messing up man since the beginning of time, starting with Satan himself. But they don't want to hear what Jesus got to say. Because they don't believe Jesus came from God. But we yielded our lives to Jesus because he's been the one that has protected us, provided for us, and kept us all this time. And we found out that his word is true. He don't lie. He'll tell you the truth about what's going on. The question is, what do you believe? What do you trust in? The message I had today is, where are your affections? What's important to you? What do you spend your time with? Do you spend your time worrying about what's going on in the world? Do you spend your time looking at what the devil is doing? Or are you giving a little time to listening to what God's saying? Are you listening and hearing what the Spirit is saying to his church? To the called out ones, to the ones that he's anointed and blessed, and as Audrey said, chosen. You all are chosen vessels by the Lord to learn and know of his goodness, his mercy, and his love, so that you might be a light to this ungodly world that is trapped in darkness. God, through his hand, has brought us out and bringing us into his light, his truth about what he'll do if we yield to him and trust in him. If we acknowledge his word is the truth. I can't thank him enough. I know where I was headed. I know what the enemy had in my life. And it was nothing but death and destruction. Nothing but sorrow and sadness. I just want to go, let's go to Colossians. Let's start at Colossians first. And I want to go to Colossians. Colossians, go to the book of Colossians. 
And I want to start at the third chapter. And Paul is asking a question to the church. And he's saying, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You know, as we listen to these things that God speaks to us and listen to what he's giving us, we're blessed because he promised us a kingdom. He promised us rest and peace, love and joy, patience, godliness, goodness. He promised us a relationship with us, with him, that only he can provide. But we have to live in his spirit and die to the things of the flesh. Because these two war one against another. Flesh wants you to always consider him and feed him and strengthen him and please him. The Spirit wants you to bless the Lord, trust in him, and let him bring you through the fire, through the storms, through the problems that the world has. And we always see his hand doing that. Stephanie was talking about how the car got stolen. How? Only stolen for what, a few hours? Then it was found. And besides that, you got access to all kinds of help that the world don't have. God will bring us through things. Things will happen to us. But if we take those things to his throne of grace and lay them on it, he will show himself strong. That builds trust. I had a good friend in my life that I grew up with. I grew up with him from just about birth. And I got older to remember. And you know, he's not here with us now because he, he went on to be with the Lord. But, you know, I could always depend on him. No matter what my situation was. And through that, we got closer and closer. You know, I could almost read his thoughts. He could read my thoughts because we had known each other that well. But God has opened up a door that we can come in and sit with, sup with Jesus and that we could break bread with Jesus. And Jesus will sup with us and we'll sup with him and he will start to open our understanding that we might know what he's doing in our lives. What Sister Stephanie was saying was not only a testimony, but it was a prophecy. It was a prophecy that's telling what God is doing in each and every one of our lives. Because you know what? He said, if you draw nine to me, I'll draw nine to you. I want to get closer to God. I don't want to stay where I'm at. I'm still vulnerable. My flesh is still alive. I got to die. I got the message from the Lord. You got to die to the things of the flesh so that you can grow strong in the things of the spirit. So that that anointing, so when things do come upon you, you can put your trust in Jesus and God can break that thing that tries to draw you out of his spirit into his flesh, into worrying, mistrust, wondering whether God is with you. We know God is with us. He done brought us out of too much. He didn't deliver us from too much. He didn't open up the spiritual realm to us. And we know these fight, we know what's fighting us. It ain't about flesh. It's all about spirits that motivate the flesh. But God gave us an answer. Let's go to Psalms 37 Psalms. 
That's the Psalm 37 song. That's the 37th song. And I want to start at the fourth verse. 37th Psalm, fourth verse. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in the way. Trust God to bring you through the different situations that we all are in. And I just want to go to the 23rd, 23rd verse. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. As we start to yield to the will of God and let the Lord bring us through the things that he has desired to bring us through to have the effect on our lives that he wants to have in our life, then we learn that he is the only one that can bring us through and deliver us from those situations. Though he fall, 21st, 4th verse, he shall not be utterly cast down. Oh, and haven't we fell? And haven't we slipped? And haven't we stumbled? And haven't we been just flopped around in darkness? But God, but God, but God, that renews his mercy every day and shows his love by picking us up. Like King David said, though my foot slippeth, his mercy is there to catch us and to keep us from falling into the hands of the enemy. I have, 25th verse, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed but bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. We are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. Because he's going to come into our lives and do exactly what he said. And I just thank God for that prophecy that came forth, because now we want to go to Romans, the sixth chapter. And I just thank God for his spirit, because what he does is he confirms the things that he's doing in each and every one of our lives so that we might be in agreement with him and what he's doing. See, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And you know what? I, I just want to walk with Jesus. Because you know, Jesus the only one to help me. And I think he's the only one to help you. But if, we, if I walk with Jesus, you walk with Jesus, we agree with Jesus, we'll be one in Jesus. And that's what God wants us to be, because he is the Savior. So we want to go to Romans, the sixth chapter, and we want to start at the first verse. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, either you are going to be dead to sin, or sin is going to kill you. Sin will destroy you. i never forget what Brother Tyrone, the Spirit, had him say one day. It'll take you someplace that you don't want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you can pay. Sin will always destroy. But salvation will bring you into a place that God will start to show you his power and start to bring you and bind up the brokenhearted, set the captive free, and bring you into a relation with him that can